Waza! Waza! Yo, who's that? Yo! Yo, pick up the phone! Hello? What's that? Waza! Yo, where's Dookie? Yo, Dookie! Yo! What's that? <laughs> Hold on. Hello? Today we're starting to learn about Excel. Yay! So, head over to the start menu. We're going to all program. Here we are choosing Excel. It looks like that little green button. If you can't find it that way, down here just type in Excel and when it pops up. We are choosing Excel 2016. So go ahead and open that and when you open it, it should look like this. Now the first thing I hope you notice is that the anatomy of Excel is set up very similar to that of Word. So you're going to see that we have a couple parts of the screen that are the same. Now we're going to do a quick little quiz to see if you remember what those parts are called. If you need to use Google, remember you can always head over to Google and try typing in Microsoft Excel 2016 parts of the screen. And what we did the first time when we were learning the word parts of the screen, we'll look at an image, and so here's one, and we could figure out what those parts of the screen were based on this image. Remember, you can always go back and retype the correct answer for your question. So just like in Word, we had our quick access toolbar, which is always available for us in the upper left hand corner. That gives us frequently used commands such as save, undo, and redo. We also have the most important thing, our ribbon organized by tabs and groups. And that contains all our buttons and tools and options. And finally, in the bottom right hand corner, we have the zoom buttons where we can zoom in and out of our worksheet. Now Excel is considered a spreadsheet program and it's actually a bunch of sheets or worksheets that make up a single workbook. And we can see that it's a bunch of sheets down here. We have one sheet and that makes up one entire workbook, which is why this is coming up saying book one. Easy way to remember this is to think that actual physical books are made up of sheets of paper. So an Excel workbook is made up of work sheets. Now spreadsheet is basically a big fancy table, which is why we just did tables in Word. So let's do a very quick fast review of everything you need to know about tables. A table is made up of rows and columns and in Word we call the intersection of a row and column in a table a cell. So when we move on to Excel, there's where that terminology comes from. So the intersection of a row and a column is a cell. So let's talk about navigating our table. In order to insert any data or type in a cell, all we need to do is click in the table where we want that, and then we can begin typing. I can move left to right in a table simply by pressing tab. So if you press tab, it's going to move you to the next cell. Now if I want to go backwards, I press shift tab, and it's going to move me backwards in a cell. Okay, so tab moves us forward cell to cell. Shift tab moves us backwards. So now if I want to actually get down a cell, I can use my arrow keys, and that will move me down. Now down goes down, obviously the up arrow key goes up. Right goes right, left goes left. And that is a quick recap of everything you need to know about tables. So just like our tables in Word, an Excel worksheet is made up of columns and rows. And the intersection of a column and a row is a cell. Now the columns are going to be these letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, all the way over there. And the rows are going to be the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, blah, 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 all the way down. And then a cell has a specific reference that is first the column letter followed by the row number. So this cell is going to be B3. And I can see that it's B3. Also up here it tells me this is B3. So the letter stands for the column and the number stands for the row. Now in Excel there's three different ways we can tell if we have a cell active or ready to be typed in. The first is this nice lovely black outline around the cell. The second is our column and our row highlighted. E here is highlighted. Three is highlighted. 
And the third thing that shows me the active cell again is the name up here, B3. So if I wanted to type in the cell, I would just click it like I did in my table and begin typing. Notice that as I'm typing up there on the formula bar, all my typing is going on as well too. When I'm finished typing, I need to tell Excel, yes, this is good. Just hit enter when you are done typing and that completes the cell. Now navigating the cell is the same as navigating the table. So if I press tab, that moves me cell to cell. If I do shift tab, that moves me backwards. My arrow keys move me up, down, right, and left. The only difference is if I press enter, that actually moves me down, or if I'm typing, completes a cell. So navigating is the same, the only difference is enter now moves us down in Excel. So to practice using Excel, we're going to be creating a fake gradebook. If you have any text entered in your Excel sheet, all I'm going to do is with this big chunky plus here, I'm going to click and drag over my text, and then I'm going to actually press delete, so it deletes everything in my cells. Now if I press undo, I'm control Z, I don't want anything in these rows or this column. I can delete by right clicking and choosing delete for a column and it would delete that column or if I undo, let's say I didn't want anything in those rows, I highlighted them, right click and I did delete. So there's a couple different ways you can delete information. You can either just highlight it and press delete or you can use your right click, delete on a column, or right click, delete on a row. Just make sure you've got everything blank. So we're going to be starting fresh new worksheet. So let's go ahead and click into A1. And when we made tables, we needed column headings to tell us what the heck was going on in the rows below. Same thing in Excel. We always need column and row headings. So when I'm making a grid book, I want to know what this person's first name is, press and tab, and notice that the words first name in cell A1 are actually longer than that cell. So if I type something in A1 that's longer than the cell A1, it kind of blends into cell B1. Now if I type last name in B1, first name is kind of cut off. That's because the cell column of A is not long enough to show all of that being typed. Now the biggest mistake I see people make when they're doing worksheets in Excel is they look and they type something in their first cell and it looks like it's longer and goes into cell B1 so they think that their next cell that they should start typing in is actually C1. Well now they've got an empty cell here in B1 just looks like A1 goes into B1. We just actually have to increase the width of A1. Don't skip a blank cell B1 just because it looks like the information goes in there. Instead, we're going to auto fit or make these columns bigger. Now there's two ways you can do this. If you hover your mouse in between columns, you see that you get that double arrow. You can either click and drag and make the cell bigger that way, or if you double click it, it auto fits to the longest information. So don't make the mistake of skipping a whole entire cell and leaving it blank just because it seems like it overflows into that cell. It doesn't. Everything that you type goes into that specific cell. So in A1, we want first name, B1, we want last name. And then let's say they have test one and test two. So if I auto fit all of these columns by double clicking, I keep my information in the cells that they need to be in and I don't have any blank cells in between them. So enter first name, last name, test one score, test two score, and then double click in between your columns to auto fit those. Then I want you to add in five fake friends, so I don't really care what you do, we're just adding in five fake friends and give them a score out of 100 
and I'm going to do it in percent. So let's say James Bond got 99%. I do not need to write the percentage in. I don't need to write that little percent mark in. We're going to fill that in later. So go ahead and make five fake friends with five fake test scores out of 100. Remember, as you're typing, if you want to get to the next cell, just press tab and it will move you to the next cell. If I get to the end of this cell and I press enter, it's actually moving me down. So if I'm typing the last name, instead of hitting enter, I'm just going to hit tab and it moves me over and I can fill in my information. If I press enter, it's moving me down a row. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five friends. And some of these names get really close and cut off. So again, I'm going to double click and auto fit some of their information in. So that I've got five friends and their five test scores for test one and test two. Now let's say we forgot to actually add some information such as a student ID number or golly gosh darn D, we just forgot to insert the actual name of the table. We can insert rows and columns into Excel if you forgot. The big thing is to know where to click to insert that. So if I forgot to insert a student ID number before column A, I need to right click on column A and choose insert and it's going to insert it to the left. Let's say I had forgot to insert something in between B and C. It always goes before the column I want. So if I wanted it in between here, I'd right click on C and choose insert. So when I right click and do insert, it always does it before. We actually do want to do a student ID number. So right click on A, inserts that and we want to call this ID number. And let's just do one, two, three, four, five. Cool. And then we also wanted to give a title to our table, and I want that above everything. So I'm going to right click on one and choose insert. And in A1, I want to call this grade book. And in Excel, you can format text just like you formatted in Word. So if I wanted all of these to maybe be bold, what I'm doing right now is selecting them. Now there's a couple different ways. I need you to figure out as far as selecting goes. The first thing in Excel is this nice, lovely, chunky plus. Anytime I see the chunky plus, that means I can select a certain cell. If I want to select a range of cells, I have to see chunky plus, and then I click and drag with chunky plus. Sometimes people make the mistake of clicking here in the bottom right hand corner of a cell and seeing the skinny plus, and they click and drag, what that does is copies any information in the cell that you clicked and dragged from. So chunky plus is going to let us select cells. If you see this crosshair and you're clicking and dragging, that actually lets you move cells. And you don't see the crosshair unless you're right on the edge, and that clicks and drag would move a cell. So chunky plus highlights, crosshairs, move cells back and forth. And the skinny plus in the bottom right hand corner would be copying whatever was in my cell. So I'm going to step backwards. So if I wanted to format these, I'd chunky plus. I can do whatever I did before. I could bold, I could increase some font sizes, I could choose a different font base for my headings. And remember, always auto fit after you do any of this stuff just so you make sure it's looking nice. So I do want you to format the font of your column headings just so we know where that's going. And you can format the alignment too. So if I want my ID number centered, I would just highlight those with the chunky plus and do centered. Maybe I want my test scores centered. I could do that that way too. Now, grade book, I want to go all the way across this last test score. So just like in the tables, when we merged cells, we took a bunch of different cells and squished them into one. You can do the same thing in Excel. So I want this all the way across to the end to be one cell. So I'm using chunky plus to click and drag and highlight. And then right up here on the alignment group, I'm going to do merge and center. And it's now made it one giant merged cell, which is great. Again, let's format it to something cool. 
change the font color. Go ahead, you should have added the ID number column. You should have added the title cell that's merged and centered across A through E. Now that you know the anatomy and how to enter data into Excel, we're going to save our workbook so we can continue working on it later when we learn how to have Excel do different math functions for us and create graphs. So saving in Excel is the same as saving in Word. We're going to go up to the File tab and we have our two options, Save and Save As. Always when we start off, we do a Save As. Again, we have all our options over here. We're going to make sure we browse and then go over to our OneDrive Triton folder, our Computer Apps class, and then we find the correct week that we're in. And we're going to go ahead and name this file Gradebook. And then we simply just click Save, and that's it. Peace out. <laughs>